We're in the middle of a sermon series on the Holy Spirit called Ghost Stories, where we're going through various stories in the Bible where the Holy Spirit shows up in a fantastic and amazing way, and then talking about how that same Holy Spirit wants to do that same work in our lives now. Last week, we talked about the hovering spirit. We talked about the spirit hovering over the murky, dark chaos of creation and how the spirit can birth new life and new creation out of the dark messes of our lives. This morning, we will look now in Judges, the 15th chapter. Another great story here in Judges chapter 15. We'll begin there in verse 13, then we'll go to verse 14. Uh, You know what's happening here. In the story of Samson, it says this, Agreed, they answered, we will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes or two new cords and led him up from the rock. And as he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting. They were coming to kill him, in other words. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. And the ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. I want to speak to you for a few minutes this morning on something the Lord has laid on my heart for us today. The cord-breaking spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we come before you in need of a word from you. Lord, I pray, may your Holy Spirit come and stir our hearts today. May your Holy Spirit come and awaken our minds today. For you, O Lord, have a word you want to speak to us, and I pray, Lord, help us to receive it today. But not only that, Lord, help me to speak it with clarity and authority that no one would leave this place without interacting with and being changed by the word of the living God. Come and speak to us by word and spirit today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. The nation of Israel was in trouble. Israel had strayed from God, and because of that, they had been turned over to the hands of the Philistines that oppressed them for 40 long years. Yet as that oppression came to its fulfillment, God was ready to bring the people back to him. And in doing so, he sent an angel to a man and a barren wife and told them that they would have a son. This son would be stronger than anyone who had ever lived. This son would have the strength to bring the people back to God. This son would have the strength to deliver them from their oppressors, the Philistines. This son would have the power to live up to a great potential to be used by God in a mighty way. And this morning, I would suggest that this young man, Samson, has a great deal in common with all of us in this room. We too live in a world that has strayed far from God. We too live in a world that is unrighteous. We too live in a world that's under oppression from the enemy. We too live in a world that needs deliverance, in a world that needs saving, in a world that needs changing. And yet just as God did not leave the Israelites to their own devices and destruction, so God has not abandoned our world. No, friend, God has sent some people like me and you into this world, and He has given us the potential, He has given us the ability to make a difference for God. God wants to strengthen you so that you can bring the world around you back to God just like Samson was brought into the world to do. What does that mean, preacher? It means that God wants you to make a difference in your family. God wants you to make a difference in your school. God wants you to make a difference in your workplace. God wants you, like Samson, to rise up in a crooked and messed up world and to bring that world back to the heart of God. You and I have potential to do great things for God Almighty. And yet... 
Going into Judges chapter 14, we find Samson is living up to that potential. He's a judge, which means a ruler at that time in Israel. He's leading the people with strength and resolve. He's drawing the people back to God. He's doing everything that God had intended for Samson to do in this world. God was using Samson to the glory of God. And here this man, Samson, makes a terrible mistake. In Judges chapter 15, he learns that his father-in-law, soon to be father-in-law, has given his fiancée away to a man that he is friends with. With friends like that, who needs enemies? <laughs> Married the woman that was supposed to be his wife, and so Samson got angry, as men sometimes do. The number of wives looking at their husband right now is astounding. <laughs> He got angry and he burned down the vineyards and he tried to bring destruction and the Philistines whose crops were now destroyed were not happy and so they went and told the people, listen, you had better straighten up and get a hold of Samson or this is not going to go well. And in the passage that we read, the people have come running to Samson, scared out of their mind and they say, listen, we've got to bind you up and hand you over to the enemy. They took two new cords, ropes, bands, and they tied him up with them. Now, we do not know exactly what those cords were made of. We do not know how thick they were. We do not know how strong they were, but we do know this. They were stronger than Samson. Picture it now, the most strong man to ever live, and yet he's bound with these two cords that are keeping him from doing anything. He has all the potential to be used by God, and yet he can't do a thing because these cords are wrapping him up and keeping him from doing what God had called him to do. And friend, even in our lives now, the enemy knows one of the quickest ways to keep us from living up to that potential. One of the best ways to keep us from doing what God has put us here to do is to get us wrapped up in things we got no business being wrapped up in that will keep us and bind us and hold us and keep us from the will of God for our lives. I see people all the time in church with great potential, great ability, and yet they have things that have wrapped them up and bound them up that are keeping them from doing anything for the Lord. There are many cords that can bind us today. I see so many people in church that they are bound by cords of unforgiveness and bitterness. That somewhere along the line, someone said something to them or someone did something to them and now they just can't break free from it and they just can't move forward with their lives. That their dad said they would be there and then he wasn't and they've carried it their whole life. That the spouse said they would be faithful but then they weren't and it haunts them every single day. That the church person said, I love you and I care about you, but then when times got tough, they were nowhere to be found. There are people that have been hurt by other people, and now they've allowed that hurt to bind them and hold them and keep them from trusting anybody or moving forward into what God might want to do in their lives. Cords of unforgiveness. I've seen people bound by cords of anger. People that are angry, and they don't really even know why they're angry. Something happened at some point in their lives, and ever since then, they've never been able to get a handle of it, and they find themselves getting angry. And they say things they would never normally say, and they do things they would never normally do, and they fly off the handle of anything and everything, and it keeps them from being used by God because folks can't trust them because, oh, you know how their temper is. Cords of anger. There are people bound by cords of insecurity, of depression, and even suicide. Not just out there in the world, friend. No, right here in the church. There are people bound by the cords of depression and even suicide. There are people who go throughout their day feeling like their life is a waste, feeling like no one understands, that no one cares. They find themselves asking, if I didn't show up anymore, would anybody even notice? 
Statistics tell us that 12 million people every year in this country contemplate taking their own life because they feel like their life is not worth living. In this country, every 11 minutes, someone ends their life prematurely through suicide. Since this church service has started, friend, four people have ended their life. Why? Because they were bound up with cords that were bigger than they were. There are folks today bound by cords of addiction that their decisions they've made in their life and they try not to do what they do, but they keep on doing it anyways. That they say they're not going to smoke that or drink that, but they find themselves doing it again. They say they're not going to look at that or participate in that, and yet they find themselves doing it again. And they cannot control their choices in life and it has become a bondage to them. Do you know that even now, that one out of every four teenagers in this country, by the time they get out of high school, will already be addicted to some substance in their life? Do you realize that over 40% of men in this country say that they struggle with lust? Interesting note, there's also a study that shows 60% of men struggle with lying. I'll let you do the math. <laughs> Cords. Of addiction, cords that bind us, cords that keep us from moving forward into what God has for us. Friend, for each of us, the cord might be different. For each of us, the circumstance might change. But the reality is the same, that the enemy wants to move in and to keep us so wrapped up and so bound up that when God says, here's an opportunity to be used by me, that they're so wrapped up that they can't take that step into what God has for them. Oh, but I've come to preach to somebody this morning. God did not make you to be bound up. God did not make you for slavery. God did not make you for captivity. God did not make you for this bondage. No, Christ Jesus put you in this world and He wants you to live free and to live a life that is not bound by the things of this world. That is God's will for you. And yet, even though... We know that's God's will. People's problem is not they don't know God's will, it's that they struggle to live it. Why? Because these cords, these bands, these chains, they, they have a hold on us. And, and right, Samson, remember, Samson was the strongest man in all the world, and yet he could not break these two cords to save his life. He could tug all he wanted to tug and he could pull all he wanted to pull and he could do everything he knew to do and yet none of it could set him free. And I've seen people in church that have tugged and tugged and they've pulled and pulled and they've done everything they know to do only to discover that they cannot free themselves from the bondage. You can go through every program known to man and still stay bound and addicted to things in your life. Right. You can get the best psychiatrist that money can buy and still find yourself in a place that you cannot overcome depression no matter how hard you try. You can watch every rerun of Dr. Phil known to man and still not be able to let go of that issue of unforgiveness. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a program. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with with a, a counselor or a psychiatrist. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Dr. Phil if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> but what I'm saying is there may come a point in your life that you tug and you tug and you pull and you pull in your own power like Samson and discover that there is nothing you can do to get out of the bondage that you have found yourself in. Oh, but friend, I come with good gospel news for somebody this morning. For the Bible tells me that when Samson had tugged all he could tug and he had pulled all he could pull, the Bible said that the Spirit of the living God came mightily upon Samson. And when the Spirit of God came on Samson, things began to change. For the Bible said this, that these two new cords became as burnt flax. 
as melted wax. That's another way to say that. It became so easy to break that Samson looked down and without even having to try, it's like it just came off of him and he was set free and no longer bound. Hear me, what he could never tug his way out of, what he could never pull his way out of, the spirit of the living God showed up and the cords began to break and freedom began to come when the spirit of God showed up on the scene. Was somebody give him praise today? And even now, you may have tugged all you can tug and pull all you can pull on the cords in your life. Oh, friend, there is a spirit here to help you. The same Holy Spirit that came on Samson so that he could get loose is the same Holy Spirit that is at work in the world even now. That same Holy Spirit comes. And Paul tells us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means that when you bring it to God, the Spirit of the Lord begins to move and things that you couldn't break all of a sudden begin to burn away. They begin to melt. They begin to disappear when the Spirit of God is working in your life chains cords begin to break and I love the, the Hebrew word there it doesn't just say it, it breaks quite literally it melts and dissolves oh I love that because that gives us assurance today though no matter what cord we may bring to this altar, God can't just break it in half, God can melt it so that it's not even there anymore, oh hallelujah Chains of insecurity are broken. Cords of unforgiveness are broken. Cords of bitterness are broken. Cords of addiction are broken. Cords of depression are broken. Cords of low self-esteem are broken. Whatever it is that binds you, when it gets in the presence of the Holy Spirit, it will begin to shadow back and begin to melt away and you can go free. Amen. Say, preacher, how do you know that? Because I prayed with some of you in these altars over the last year and a half of being your pastor. And I've seen the Spirit of the living God bring liberty to people. I've seen people that came so bound with unforgiveness and pain and as soon as we got done praying, they begin to cry and say, Preacher, I've had hatred in my heart for years, but all of a sudden I don't feel that hatred I used to feel anymore. I've seen people that said, I can't stop living that way, but they got a hold of God in this altar. And now months later, they're living a different way and walking a different way because the Spirit of the Lord set them free. Tug all you want to tug and pull all you want to pull on those cords. I'm telling you, there are some things that won't come loose until the Spirit of God gets involved in your life. But don't you look again now at how important that is, what the Spirit of God does. The Spirit of God doesn't take off cords and set them on the side. Again, the Spirit of God melts them, dissolves them, so they crumble as He tears them off His hands. Now, here's why that's important. If the Spirit of God had just taken that cord off of Samson, and guess what? The Spirit of God took it off of Samson, those Philistines could put it right back on him. Spirit of God doesn't leave that to chance. He says, Samson, if you'll let me, I won't just take it off of you. I'll dissolve it so there's no chance of you ever stepping back into the bondage that I'm bringing you out of. You see, the Spirit of the Lord doesn't want to give you freedom for six months. The Spirit of God wants to give you freedom from here on out that you'll never be the same again. I've seen, hear me now, I've seen so many Christian people that they are willing to let God set them free, but they are not willing to let God melt the chains in their life. What do you mean by that, preacher? I mean that they'll let God set them free from depression and anxiety and the people in their lives that have caused them to feel that way. But they'll keep following them on Facebook just in case. Hello. Hello. I've seen people get out of drugs and say, I'm not going to do it anymore. But they keep the drug dealer's phone number in their phone just in case. Come on. I've seen people try to get free from lust in their life, but then they keep those websites saved on their computer just in case. 
See, some folks, they want the Spirit of God to take off the cords, but they're not into God melting cords just in case. And then as soon as times get bad, as soon as things get difficult, they will fall right back into the same chains that God just took off of them. Oh, but friend, the Spirit of God comes today and says, I am not just a spirit that sets you free. I am a spirit that will melt every cord. I am a spirit that will break down every chain. I am a spirit that will dissolve every bondage. I am a spirit that you will not go back to it any longer. The Spirit will give you the strength to say, I'm sorry to some people you've held bondage with or held unforgiveness toward for far too long. The Spirit will give you the strength to delete some numbers out of your phone that you ain't got no business having in your phone. The Spirit will give you the strength to unfollow some people that you don't need to be following on Facebook anymore. The Spirit will give you the strength to take that pistol by your bed and give it to somebody else and say, I'm not ending my life because God has a purpose and a plan for me. Don't leave the cords laying around. Don't leave the opportunity around for the devil to work. No, the Spirit of the, God, of the living God will melt it and dissolve it and set you free if you will let Him. So here's what I know. I know that when God shows up, freedom comes. And the level, hear me, the level of freedom that you will have will be determined by how much you're willing to let that spirit work in your life. In Samson's desperation, he let the spirit of the Lord come on him and God took care of the rest. I feel under the sound of my voice this morning. There's some people that know Samson's desperation. That you've been bound for too long. You've carried it around for too long. And like Samson with the Philistines, the enemy is closing in on you. Shouting and calling for your death. Calling, saying they'll never be what God called them to be. They'll never live another day. They'll never have the freedom Christ has for them. I tell you today, the devil is a liar. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty for you. When that cord-breaking spirit shows up, would you stand with me this morning?